Hey everyone, my name is Tyler Edlin. Thank you for joining me today at uh, Brush Sauce Theater Episode 4. Today I'm going to ramble on a little bit about uh, portraits. So it's been more or less documented enough on how to draw from life, whether it be you know friends or relatives, maybe even the smelly ones too. So this is just a note, this is not how to draw the human head video, but more uh, ways to approach portraits with a sense of uh, style and lighting. So with that said, I'll be giving a brief lesson on lighting and the different uh, ways to approach it, followed by a big boss painting demo. Um, the slides now I'm gonna about to show you are scanned in directly from my book uh, from James Gurney's uh, Color and Light. So if you don't have it and want to improve, I recommend you go order it from Amazon immediately. I learned a lot from it, it's fantastic. So I'm not trying to take credit uh, for this information, I'm simply regurgitating it to you guys. Alright, so first way of doing lighting is three-quarter lighting and this is probably the most popular way to light the figure um, it comes you know across like 45 degree angle or so and it's simply in front of the character um, now the main light in the main light is generally called the key light and that will take you know three quarters of the human head leaving just one quarter of it in shadow as it's on the left in these two characters down here and on the right in this top sample and that's three quarter lighting it's really simple basic and basic and a great way to start now next I have frontal lighting now this is when the camera is moved you know direct or the light anyway is directly in front of the subject so it doesn't matter the orientation of the head there's an example here of you know for the front and the, the, the side view and it's the light can either be hard or soft um, you know direct or not but it's um it's not particularly exciting but it's a great way to emphasize um, the flatter shapes and design right ra rather than the sculptural form uh, and you see you can just read the the shapes basically and the forms get a little bit lost in here and that's all I was saying and same with this I'll be kinda of doing different uh, all these will be applied in that eventual Metal Gear uh, painting I'm doing more or less just jumbled up alright now I have uh, edge lighting and uh, this is an example of the book itself uh, now this this is where the key light is located usually behind the major uh, subject matter and what happens is the light touches the edges and kind of wraps around you know at least one or more sides of it and this this rim light uh, usually separates the figure from the background and this can be a little trickier than it appears it's not just a matter of uh, you know taking white or um, you know the brighter color and just drawing a hard edge line around the object it, there's a certain aesthetic that has to be applied here and that can be seen right here in this um, the, the statue uh, let's see the light bleeds right over into the form where applicable and so knowing how these forms you know lead into one another really helps with um, your applying of that and you see that's different more on the sheep here where the you know the skylight and you really just see a little bit of a you know the rim light of, of it on the, the the wool here and it's it's bleeding in a little bit but not too too much so you know there's the best way to get better at a lot of this is just to either you know study photographs or or paintings in general now, sorry for uh, butchering this next one. I'm not French. It's a, a French term here. Uh, contre jour. I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. Um, but this is uh, where the main light source is always. Uh, it's always behind the subject. You see, it's mainly behind the figures here, and then it's, the sun is kind of like overcast, setting behind uh, the house here. And that's another thing too. All these lighting styles or scenarios can be applied. You know, landscape figures. It's all universal. It's all the same. So, um, it, it, it's blocking out the main source. And in terms of the light, it's kind of infusing a little more. It's not as hard edged as the previous one, the edge lighting. It's kind of more infused around the edge of the subject, as you can see. And it just kind of creeps around the form subtly. 
be doing some of that. Uh, the last example I'm going to show you for today, so I don't want to bore you guys, is a reflective light. And here's a few examples. Um, basically, within a scene or a field of view, any object that receives a strong enough light becomes its own light source. So here, you know, the light's coming in from the right, hitting the red, you know, surface, and that's turning this essentially into a light source bouncing back at the subject in the color of it. And, you know, here's another example too where, you know, the light's coming from above and you can see the differences it takes, you know, on this white, uh, on this white structure. The, the, the way the bounce light usually infuses the shadows. And here's a, a Mirror's Edge is famous for this. It, it did this so well and more recently The Last of Us is really using bounce lighting effectively. But, you know, see that it, Again, the, the, the light source is coming in from the top right, hitting the red wall, and it's just totally illuminating um, the environment with um, the red tone of the wall. And with that said, there is a lot more other ways of lighting something. That's just a few of the basic ones I thought I'd uh, talk about today. All right, now, uh, to begin, I'm making a document that is... Uh, roughly uh, 2,000 pixels wide and 4,000 tall at 72 resolution and that's nothing absolute, it's just what's working for me on this one. Um, this is Photoshop 6, CS6 and I'm using a Wacom tablet medium in case anyone was wondering. Um, now before I begin painting I generally like to get a at least a base drawing done. It's, it'll be pretty crude but it will it'll work for the painting, especially since I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to paint this. And um, I don't like to draw on uh, you know, a blank uh, document like you know, pure white, so I just threw in a gradient. And that's on uh, the first layer, and then I make this layer above, and where I'm just using um, various brushes that work well for drawing. And uh, you can follow the link in the description to download my brushes. I, I'm updating them uh, this weekend with this video, so you can use the same tools that I do. It doesn't, the brush doesn't really matter. You can do all this with the, the default brushes as well if you don't want to go through the hassle. And so yeah, I'm just blocking out uh, the main figure. This isn't a great construction drawing, but um, hopefully it will serve my purpose. I guess my ultimate goal with this painting is to kind of do like a throwback to the old like 80s and 90s action movie poster style. So, you know, especially like the the release of uh, Blood Dragon, uh, Far Cry 3, the expansion re um, that came out recently, it'll kind of be in that vein where you know, I'm going to go pretty intense with some of the colors. So, it, it'll definitely have some, it'll be a bit stylized. And another movie poster artist in particular I'll be taking a lot of inspiration from is Drew Struzan, who's famous for, you know, the Blade Runner, the Star Wars, the Back of the Future posters. I just love what he does and how he kind of montages the characters up. And so, yeah, since I'm not obviously going to, like, mishmash a bunch of photos together, I'll kind of be adding my own kind of personal style and flair to it, just by the way I do it on my own, you know, with, like, lots of paint texture. It'll kind of look like an oil painting or so. And the reason I'm doing this is I need to really practice my characters. So this doing a poster in this um, fashion will allow me to do lots of character faces with different angles and different sets of lights. So I'm just trying to maximize, you know, each kind of like study session. Although this one took me far longer than I wanted it to, but I, I feel I gained a lot from it. All right. So what am I doing now? Well, with the the background 50% uh, gray, that leaves me basically two options. I can block out white, which I'm doing now, which is going to be where the, the light hits, like the highlights of the face, and then, you know, I go a shade darker, and that's where the shadows will be. And this kind of helps me sculpt the form of the, the figure, you know, the face. So I feel this is a great um, opportunity to, to set up the values for the rest of the painting. I'll be able to take it in numerous directions from here with a lot of the, the problem solving already figured out. And I'm kind of just using like a smeary brush and then even um, I'm using the, the smudge tool a bit and kind of help blending it in a bit. Alright, so pretty much at this point I'm going for the three-quarter lighting with the light coming in on the right and uh, the left side will be in the shadow. Of course I complicate this a lot eventually by adding 
the backlighting and then like uh, a second side light on the, the left. Uh, yeah, it, it gets busy, but now I'm kind of just having fun with it, exploring my options, uh, kind of giving an ink brush look, kind of like uh, Yoji Shinkawa's original Metal Gear art. He's one of the main concept artists, for that, and he does a lot of the marketing and promotion with promotional material for the, the series. Yeah, so looking back from the, you know, the original one I showed at the beginning, the, the finished poster, this is nothing like it. This is just kind of exploring my um, options and I have layers set up specifically for the highlights and then the shadows where I can wipe, smudge, and erase, you know, them as I need them to kind of fit the form. It's kind of funny though how much this guy actually does look like David Hayter, the voice actor for Snake in this series. It really does look like him. And I just kind of clean this up and I'm going to get ready to go into color soon. And I'm kind of, I'm overwhelmed with that part too. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. So it's going to be trial and error. But first you can use the liquify tool to fix some of the forms. You know, just, you know, add a couple pounds or take away them from someone's face or, you know, fix hairlines and stuff. Very useful. I just wanted to take a second to note at this time, before things get crazy, I only have three layers at this point. Uh, the, the drawing, which is at top, which is invisible, and then the, the character himself, and then the gradient background still. Alright, I'll kick off the color stage by making a vivid light layer above the whole thing and making it a blue, because that's exactly what the colors are going to be in this painting, very vivid. And that'll kind of tone everything. Now, I just turn the, the, the drawing layer on and off as I need it. That's still on the very top. Now I'm going to start exploring my different options. I'm not really sure how it's going to end up at this point, but I'm going to have fun and try things. So I'm adding like a, this rim light with a, a very uh, kind of like a neutral purplish pink. Because right, nothing says 80s like pink and purple. And really from here, it's a lot of just experimenting with the different custom brushes I have to get some paint marks on and to build texture. And that usually just constitutes me um, just uh, adding and subtracting, like, you know, adding one texture with a brush and then taking a different texture brush and erasing parts of it. And that's what kind of builds up, like, the grid of it and adds some tooth to it. And then... Um, here I'm just I make a color layer and I am adding in some uh, like the local colors of the skin you know just to tone it, get it out of the the complete purple range. And so that's how I kind of approach defining the different uh, you know materials. So you know it's basically just going to be skin and then his like rubberish style arm or whatever he's wearing here. And now I'm back on top of a new layer that's uh, set to normal and I'm starting just to kind of block out some of the colors and um, at this point I'm really just trying to figure out what the, you know, the, the temperature or the, the face and how that will affect the hues I place in and so I really just jump all over the place with this one as you can see here it, it, I go in with texture if you use the smudge tool with different texture brushes that also affects it differently and since I'm never 100% certain how it's going to turn out, a lot of it is just kind of playing with it. And the most important thing to remember when you're doing something like this or, you know, just to exercise in general, you try to make it as fun as possible. And so that's all I'm really all I'm really, really doing. Anyway, yeah, just, I, I don't know how to to explain it best, but I'm really just, once you think the foundation of the inner painting is in, in place and you kind of know the structure of the the figure it's just a matter of trying out different colors and their you know intensities and erasing and adding with the different texture brushes to kind of go for that impressionist look that I'm, I'm going for here and there's no right or wrong way on how to do this it's just kind of like pure experimentation and fun And usually, a lot of the time, even the well, usually the colors on the under un, underpainting will serve and just kind of peek through a bit on the final piece. So uh, underneath, I uh, I sometimes in this you know as in, in this situation here, I go a little more intense than I need to, and then I'll kind of scale it back as I as I proceed with it. And so this is still going with that three quarter lighting, and then I add a side lighting on um, 
his what's his right side now. And then with the different portraits, as you will see me develop, um, I'll even try different lightings and temperatures. I mean, but that, that's all there really is to it. And the technique I used here is just, you know, adding and subtracting with the, the brush and the eraser, different textures every time. You know, don't, don't be afraid to experiment and make mistakes. I mean, a lot of this, in, I mean, in general, this looks ugly for a long time until you can kind of just, you know, put, get into a groove with it and figure out what brushes will make what kind of mark and where you want them to appear on the face. So, anyways, uh, thank you everybody for watching this and uh, subscribing. And I hope you can take an opportunity sometime and stop by my shop. That really helps support me. And I will continue to make lots of these videos in the future. So, uh, take care.